Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn how to do something that could be a pretty interesting addition to your games. Let's learn how to draw in Unity. So we have our pointer, it could be a mouse or touch, and by clicking and dragging we can draw a line or anything. Now if you've seen my Game Dev Reacts videos and you've already seen this in action, in those videos I use this to highlight various parts of the videos as I'm explaining them. I control the pointer with a tablet, so it really is just like drawing with my hand. And I also briefly covered this in the How It's Made Verdun video, where I remade the mechanic for drawing directions on the minimap. This is actually pretty easy to do, all you need to know is just one thing, which I already covered in a previous video, and if you know that, then it's super easy. So in this video, I'm covering free flow drawing, and then stay tuned for an upcoming video where I will cover pixel drawing. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Learn how to make a Builder Defender game using C Sharp, just like I make my own Steam games or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. All right, so let's learn how to draw inside of Unity. Now, the special thing that I already covered in a previous video is simply dynamic meshes. As you know, everything that you see in a game is a mesh made up of polygons, so when you import a 3D model, it has a mesh, but you can also dynamically generate those meshes through code. And if you can do that, then you can essentially create a mesh that updates itself and adapts to the position of the mouse in order to constantly draw on screen. So here, let's learn how to do it from scratch, but in the end, I will show a more complete demo that I've made, which you can download included in the project files. So the first thing we need is to create an empty mesh. First, let's make a simple game object and just a script to run it. Okay, we have our script. Now in order to visually see it, we need to attach a mesh to this game object. So for that, we add a mesh filter. There's no need to select this, we're going to select it dynamically. And then in order to have a visual, we need a mesh render. Okay, so let's open up our script. And now here, let's make a very simple quad, just to see how mesh is actually made. Now a mesh is made up of vertices, UVs, and triangles. Then we just position the vertices. Then we set up the UVs. Now in this case, we want just a solid color, so that's pretty easy. And then finally for our triangles. Okay, so here's our basic quad. Again, if you don't understand how any of this works, then you can go watch the mesh video. In there, I cover in detail what each of these elements does, what it means, and how exactly they are set up. So we have all of our data. Now we just need to apply it to our mesh. And finally, since we're going to be dynamically modifying this mesh, let's also call mark dynamic to make it a bit more performant. Okay, so we have our mesh, which should have a quad shape. Now, in order to visualize it, Let's just get component of type mesh filter and assign our mesh to this mesh. Okay, so let's see it. And if there it is, there's our quad mesh. All right, so far so good. Also, one quick note here, over here I'm creating a mesh in the world, so I'm using a mesh filter and a mesh render. However, you can also build this exact same mesh as a UI element. Now, I covered that in detail in the radar chart video. For the mesh creation, it's all exactly the same thing. The only thing that changes is just a different component in order to render it on the UI. Okay, so with this we have our quad on screen. Now the next thing we need is just a mouse position. So for that, I've got a simple function in my utilities. So here is the function. As you can see, it's extremely simple. All it does is just takes the main camera, does a screen to warm point based on the input mouse position and gets the warm position. So with this, we've got the mouse warm position. And now just to verify that it's correct, let's simply modify this transform dot position into the mouse warm position. So let's see. And let's actually put this on a private void update so it moves along with the mouse. Okay, let's test. And yep, as I move the mouse, I've got the quad falling behind. Okay, so far so good. Also, just one brief mention, over here I'm using the method to get the mouse position in 2D. You need a different method if you're working in 2D versus 3D. But over here, I want to draw on screen, so I want the 2D method. Okay, now so far we have our mesh that we're creating through code, and we also have the mouse position. Now we need is essentially just add vertices onto this mesh as the mouse position changes. Now once again, remember how meshes work. It's all about polygons. Now here's a quick Unity tip. Over here on the scene view, if you click on this drop-down menu, 
you can see various shading modes. And for example, you can select wireframe. And this way you can view all the actual polygons that make up your visuals. So over here we can see that our quad is made up of two polygons. We have four vertices, so one, two, three, and four. And our triangles array is set up in order to generate these two polygons. So here is one and here's the other one. Now our goal with this is essentially every time we move the mouse, we're going to add, let's say, a new position here. So when we move the mouse from here over here, we need to calculate that forward delta vector. And then we take that vector and we rotate 90 degrees to get the vector pointing up, another vector pointing down. So we just add some distance, which is going to be the line thickness. Then we have these two points and we just connect them to the previous points on the mesh. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so for SARS, let's add some simple logic to only draw when the mouse is actually down. Okay, so on mouse button down, so when the mouse is pressed, then we're going to create a new mesh. And then while it's held down, then it's over here that we're going to want to update the mesh. So in order to update the mesh, we're going to need to recreate all of these arrays. Okay, so we recreate the arrays and we add the size in order to be able to add our following quad. So we're going to need two vertices, so we add two more. The UVs are the same as this vertices, so we also add two more. And we're going to create two polygons, so that means that we need six triangles. Again, when working with meshes, remember the difference between this triangle's array and the actual polygons. So a polygon is a triangle, a triangle shape. But this array is the list of indices that make up that polygon. So that is why you got three for every actual polygon. That's a bit confusing at first, but it all becomes clear when you actually see it. So we create our new arrays with the new sizes. Now we just need to actually copy the current values onto this one. Okay, so we're copying all of the indices. And to make things easy, let's also calculate our vertex indexes. So again, in order to add a new quad, we're going to add two new vertices. So here, when we go back by four, we're essentially going to grab the two previous vertices, the two ones that were created on the previous quad, and these last two, which are going to be the two new ones. Okay, so we have the arrays and the new indexes. Now, first, let's store the last mouse position so we know how to calculate the vector. So just a simple vector three for the last mouse position. Then when we create the new mesh, let's put it on that one. So again, go with that function in order to get the mouse world position. And over here, using the current one and the last one, we can calculate the mouse forward vector. Okay, we have our forward vector. Now we just need to apply 90 degrees onto this. So one approach that we can take to do that is to get the cross product of both this forward vector and the 2D normal. So the normal vector in 2D is minus one. That's because the camera is usually on a negative position, so usually on minus 10 by default. So if we calculate the cross product, we're essentially going to have the forward vector rotated by 90 degrees. Then we just multiply it by a certain line thickness. And again, this is just a direction vector, so we need to add it on top of the current position. So with this, we have calculated the new vertex on the up position. Then you just need the exact same thing, but pointing down. So that one is actually pretty easy. So new vertex down will be the same thing, except the cross is between the inverted normal 2D. So we can just multiply by minus one F. Now, if this seems too confusing, let's actually make a visual so it's easier to understand. So if you don't let's just add a field, just to be able to grab some debug game objects. So we're going to assign those in the editor. And then down here, we've got our new vertex positions. Let's just position them in there. Okay, like this. And now here, let's just make two objects. And just assign the reference and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to click. And now as I move the mouse and you have to look at where the dots are positioned. So the white dot, that is the up vertex, and the yellow dot, that is the down vertex. So we're calculating the normal between this point and the point where the mouse is right now, then apply 90 degrees to get the white dot up there and the yellow dot down there. So there you go, just some basic math. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Okay, so now that we have our two points, we just need to connect them to the previous quad. First thing we need to set up are the UVs. Those are very simple because the mesh is supposed to be a solid color. 
We only got two extra UVs, so we just need to update those two. And then finally for the triangles, Actually, here I forgot to update the vertices array. So we add the vertex up, vertex down on the UVs that are all on zero, zero, and then we set up the triangles. Again, as always when dealing with meshes, you need to be careful with the order on the triangles. It needs to be clockwise in order to face towards the camera. So just set up the new triangles and finally update the mesh with these values. Okay, so like this, it should be working. Just need to modify one thing, which is up here, we're using a fixed position. When said, it should be the mouse position. So here we could start off the mesh with an actual quad, or we can start just on an exact point, which will make it look like the initial part is much thinner than the line actually becomes. So that looks quite a bit better, so I actually prefer that. And finally, the last thing that we need here is to actually update the last mouse position. So the last mouse position becomes the new mouse position. Okay, so let's test. Okay, here I am, and as I click and drag, yep, there you go, look at that, it is indeed drawing our mesh. All right, great, it's already looking pretty good. However, this code is now running on every single frame, so this is drawing way too much. If we pause and look at it, if we look at the wireframe, this one has quite a lot of geometry, probably way too much. Right now, we're adding two new vertices and a new quad, two new polygons on every single update. So if the game is running at a thousand frames per second, then we're adding a thousand polygons per second. That is way too much, very unnecessary. So as a simple fix, we can make sure that we only run this logic if the distance from the last point is big enough. So here it is, some simple logic just testing if the distance is above a certain minimum distance. If so, then we add a new quad, if not, then we don't. Now, of course, you can play around this value in order to make the line smoother or more jagged, in order to make it more or less performant. So with this value, this one is pretty big. So like this, if I draw, yep, there's a pretty jagged line, especially if you do a lot of tight curves. But if we put this at, say, 0.1f, and yep, there it is, it looks perfect and very, very smooth. So we can click and draw the mouse, and it draws on screen. All right, awesome. So this is pretty much all there is to it. Now you can build upon this in order to add some buttons to change the line thickness, change the color, and so on. So here is my final complete demo. I've got a bunch of buttons in order to modify the size and color of the actual draw. So let's make it really thin and in black. And as I go, yep, there you go, look at that, it does draw. Now change the color, now paint it in white. So these are all using the same material, just changing the color and the material, that's it. Then make one green, make one blue, just like that. Then change, make it really thick, or make it a bit in between, and so on. So as you can see, it's all very simple. And as you can see, I also add the ability to spawn multiple lines. So all that does is just every time I click, it's creating a new game object in order to spawn it. So here on the scene, we can see each one of these is a separate game object, and each one updates perfectly. All right, so here it is. As you can see, I can click in order to draw anything in any shape. So this would be perfect for any game where you want a player to be able to draw something. So maybe that could be just a painting game, or maybe it could be a strategy game in order to devise where the units will go, or maybe a multiplayer game in order to give your teammates some notes. So like I said, this is exactly what I used in my Game Dev Reacts videos. The only other thing in there, as you can see, it's me drawing on top of the video. So that's exactly using this, but also using the transparent TNT window that I made in another video. So here is the fully working, really nice mesh drawing system. Now stay tuned for an upcoming video where I will do another drawing system, but that one will be based on pixels instead of free flow. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.